Good morning, everybody. We are here. Pretty sure today is Thursday, right? We got Thursday going on today. 76 degrees, sunny. It is beautiful outside right now. We've got Frank F. first in the chat, as always. What's going on, Frank? We got Francis, Nick F., Lucky Star, CD Wit, Paul first, maybe. I don't know. Claybro. Oh, hey, how you doing, Claybro? Good. Nah, nice pin message there. Really liked it. One and only Bronson. Look at him. Uh, look at MOB, Clay. Let's look at it. What's up, Hemi Life? How you doing? Good morning, you people. What's going on? Let's jump in the market and see where. We are at today. We've got AMC sitting in the top left down 1.30% right now, sitting at $9.46. Shiba Inu coin was doing much better earlier, sitting at $13.81 right now. It was all the way up to, I believe, like $14.85. Yes, $14.85. Pulling back a little bit at the moment. <coughs> GameStop sitting at $31.91 right now, down 1.82%. Ape down 6.31%, but bouncing nicely off these levels, up about 5% from where it was earlier when it was touching $6.33, and it is currently down 6.31%. We've got the NASDAQ soaring nicely today, up 0.79% at the moment. GameStop, we just talked about it, Bureau Therapeutics, down about 4%. Ethereum, Shiba, and Bitcoin all doing well in the green right now. Sundial sitting about 1% higher on the day. Mullen Auto down 1.23%, CEI down about a half percent, the SPY sitting at 415.81. We've got BBIG sitting at a dollar uh, three, dollar four. Highcraft Mining sitting at 84 cents right now. Netflix sitting at 230.66. Clovis dollar 27, boxed dollar 23. Revlon back down two and a half percent today. Terraluna Classic 10.6 up seven percent on the day. Very similar action in Terraluna Classic and in Shiba Inu coin this morning. We've got the QQQ sitting at 317.53, up 0.80%, and Ape, like we say, we're going to watch that, sitting at 668 at the moment. M-O-B. Look at M-O-B. M-O-B. Whew. M-O-B rolling today. Must be another IPO that we've got going on here. Up 45% at the moment and absolutely ripping. Is anybody dangerous enough? To play MOB. Let me know. Anybody dangerous enough to play MOB? We need to know. We need to know. We need to know now. Sitting at 370 on the low for the day. 590. I'm going to get a line in there if anybody's dangerous enough, dangerous enough to play it. Let me know, you guys. I'll put a line on there for you if you are. If not, I don't know. I, I think I think these risky IPO plays are, are really, I, I don't know. There's a lot of money to be made with, with these IPO attack teams out there. But nonetheless, it is not a guaranteed play. Definitely some risky business. <clears throat> Sean, good morning to you. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, John J. Good morning. Good day, fellow bro. Stigbeater, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Whatever it is for you, good day. Options update. AMC now weekly options up to $13.50 strike. Monthly options still available up to $26 strike. No options are available for Ape at this time. Yeah, I saw a lot of people upset about options on Ape yesterday. But just because it had the, the options chain page available doesn't mean that we actually had options available. If you're looking at Ape, uh, it's got this options button, yes, but no data available. I mean, there was no data available yesterday either, but people were really freaking out about it, man. Uh, nonetheless, guys, it, it does look <coughs> like it, it could be a red day for Ape today. Pulling back a little bit, sitting at 669 at the moment right now, down 6.31%. So we're going to see how that plays out. And MOB, we're going to know if anybody needs to get in here and roll on higher or not during the day. I want to see this action play, take place. Got in at 408. One and only Bronson in at 408. Let's see. We're going to have to put the line on there. Then Bronson playing this tricky little play right here. 408. Not bad, man. Let's see. Any stop loss, Bronson? Do you have any stop loss or anything like that? Are you just letting it roll today? 408, we're going to see how that bad boy plays out right there. MOB, rolling higher at 583. Not a bad gain at all, man. Really moving on that one. I like it. Hit the like button. Listen to Roulette Wheel and hit that like button. Otherwise, I will hit you guys with an ad. <clears throat> Do you think Luna Classic will hit a dollar after everything that's going on? I mean, I really don't think it's impossible a couple years down the road. To see Luna Classic sitting at a dollar, if you know, if these burn taxes actually go through and actually burn 
Terra Luna Classic. Um, it, it is very important. I, I really don't think it's going to hit a dollar if it's got, you know, a, a trillion coins outstanding. We're going to need to burn a lot of coins. I don't see a trillion dollar valuation on Terra Luna Classic. But, you know, if we're able to burn like 7 trillion coins, if we're basically able to burn all of the coins that are out there, then yeah, I, I really do think that it could hit a price like a dollar. Crypto Connor saying 6.4 trillion. It might be easier than we think. You think Luke can get the supply to, ooh, 10 million? Look, I do, but here's, here's what I think. If we continue to burn more, the more and more and more that we burn, the higher the price should theoretically go. And we should th theoretically be able to burn less as the price is moving higher. So uh, there, there is some sort of a an evening out or some sort of a, I, mean, I don't know the best way to word it, but an offset, I guess. It's nice to burn when the price is low. It's nice to burn when the supply is extremely high. But as you burn that supply down, it should theoretically get harder to burn and therefore, if we're able to burn a billion tokens a day right now, one day we should only be able to burn, I don't know, a million coins or, or whatever. So I do think it's going to get harder as time goes on. 10 million might be low, but nonetheless, I do think we're going to be able to burn a significant amount with that 1.2% burn tax. <coughs> Anything happening news-wise today? You know, I don't know if anything is happening news-wise today. Uh, Shiba Inu coin, I know we've got William Volk at the Gamescom, the, the gaming convention that's going on in Germany right now. Um, as far as Terra Luna Classic goes, I think tomorrow is potentially the news day there with staking being re-enabled. Uh, AMC, I don't think that there should be any news today. In terms of what's going on with AMC. Uh, and then, like, overall market. I don't think anybody's talking today. I don't think there's any major releases today. I don't think we got anything really going on at all in terms of significant news releases today. No, ignore. Never, John J. Never. Same to man. Pass me a tissue. Heck yeah. Rolling so far. One and only Bronson. You're making some money, man. I love it. Uh, good morning, all you glorious apes. Good morning, you glorious Frodo. The longer they go without an options chain for ape, the better, in my opinion. One less way to manipulate the price, and apes won't be throwing their money. Uh, dude, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people prefer to play options as opposed to just buying and holding the shares. <coughs> um, clearly, I think it's better for the squeeze if you buy and hold shares, but if you have to try and generate an income... And, and whatever, options are the way to go, in my opinion, as opposed to, uh, I guess, going out and buying and selling shares. I, I, I would rather see you buy and sell options than buy and sell shares. Uh, can't be in the live today, but just drop, drop it a like. JB, man, thank you for clicking that like button. It is all right if you can't be in the live stream today, because we know you'll be here tomorrow. Any news on the other side land sale? Interesting, Adam. I have actually not seen anything. Uh, I've really not seen anything from the Board Ape Yacht Club crew or the other side, other deeds, the the Ape Coin guys, in quite some time. I think a lot of those people are just very happy with their their merch that they got right now. That's the only thing I really see them posting is is their Board Ape Yacht Club merchandise that they've got. So I actually have not seen anything about the other side, other lands, or other deeds, whatever they're called. Home today with a C word too. First time in the early live. How do you think the market is going tomorrow with the Fed announcement? Aaron, gosh, man, why is everybody getting the C word right now? It's terrible. Well, I do hope you feel better <coughs> much quicker than, than you know, the, the week and a half or whatever that I've been coughing here. So hopefully you feel fine and you're able to rest it off after a couple days. But well, let's see what the Fed's talking about tomorrow. I know Jerome Powell is supposed to be talking tomorrow, right? But I don't know. I don't know if it's specifically. It's not about the minutes and it wouldn't be an interest rate decision on a Friday. So what do we got tomorrow? 
Just we get Fed Chair Powell talking. Okay, at the Jackson Hole Symposium. Gotcha. <coughs> Look, at this point in the game, I don't think it's necessarily going to be bad news. Um, I do think that it's bad news, but I don't know if the market's going to be like going to be interpreting it as bad news when when Jerome Powell talks. I think it's going to be a lot of the same stuff that we've been hearing. Uh, you know, the Federal Reserve is going to do everything that they can in order to make sure blah, blah, blah. The labor market is excellent. The, the jobs losses aren't there. The unemployment rate is still extremely low. I, I think there's going to be a lot of that talk going on and, and therefore a positive spin on what's actually happening. But guys, there's been a... When it comes to the government, man, there's been a lot of spending going on over the last couple of weeks. And it's almost like they don't realize that spending causes inflation. And we're already at record levels of inflation. So I don't know what they're thinking. It doesn't make much sense logically to me. But nonetheless, I, I do believe that they're going to have their positive spin on it. Because the, the labor market is, is good. And I put quotes around it, man. Because just because people aren't willing to go to work doesn't mean that the unemployment rate is low. Uh, there are thousands of other tickers they can gamble with options on. Better for a squeeze if Ape goes, dude, 100%, man. And I, I really don't know why. I think, I think like, here's my perception on that. People have been watching AMC on a daily basis for so long now that they truly believe that they can predict what it is going to do. And they can, they, they, I guess have some sort of a, an emotional connection to AMC that they can tell what's going to happen next. And that's dangerous, man. That causes them to think that they're invincible. And therefore, they got to go play options. And it's very strange to me because they constantly seem to lose on options. And nonetheless, they continue to play and continue to be convinced that they know exactly what's going to happen next. So there's been a lot of money. You're right. A lot of money spent on AMC uh, on the options chain. And I do think it's because people watch it every day and they think that they know what's going to happen next. And then they wonder, well, man, it's just like clockwork. Every Friday they beat us down in price. Guys, if they were going to beat us down in price every single Friday, buy puts. Literally, buy puts. If you think it's a sell a call option, do something. If you think it's guaranteed to go down on a Friday, um, <laughs> it's, it's crazy to me that, that people get that wrapped up into the options. Uh, Ethereum burns 99 million in Shiba. Ethereum's burning Shiba Inu coin now? Hey, bro, not sure for tomorrow to... Okay, not sure for tomorrow to stake with. Is there one that you recommend? Luna Club... Yeah, Vince, so that's completely up to you, man. I am not a huge advocate of staking to begin with. Um, I truly believe that if you've got... The only reason you should be staking is if you have no intentions of selling your coins at all for the entire allotted time frame. Even if Luna Classic were to go to a dollar tomorrow and, and you still would not sell it, okay, well, then you can stake. But... That's that's my biggest problem with staking is that cryptocurrency is so volatile and especially these smaller coins like Shiba Inu coin and uh, and Terra Luna Classic and so on that they run so fast. It's almost like you have to take advantage of it because these gains are not sustainable. So if you're staking, you can't do it. Um, I would just be careful if you do decide to stake somewhere. And, and just, I guess, know that you can't sell your coins. If you get no intentions of selling, well, that's fine then. Go ahead and stake. But I would rather take advantage of the of the capital gains than 5% staking reward or whatever it's going to be. How <coughs> uh, will Luna T be useful? A do so with the rewards once the supply gets down to a few hundred million and a Lunk price is in double digits... How, how is Lunatic's token? Is that what you're talking about? How is Lunatic's token going to be useful? Listen, 
the the only thing I can come up with that is that they have Terra Luna Classic rewards as well as burns. So they will be rewarding you in burns. And and think about it. If if Terra Luna Classic and Lunatics Token are both doing extremely well at that point in time, you're gonna be making a lot of money, man, because the, the if they're if they're redistributing it to everybody that owns it and you got in early and you own a lot of Lunatics token and the volume is extremely high, you know, you're gonna be seeing some nice distributions. Applied volatility is why, it, and it helps option sellers win. Uh, let's see, implied volatility. Uh, I know I missed something. Implied volatility is is what? Why the? Why people lose money on options? Is that what you're saying? Never played with options. No interest in them either. I recognize the money is to be made, but they're not for me. Yeah, Robert. <clears throat> look, dude. Uh, a lot of people look at options and think that they're only a way to leverage your portfolio. And that's not necessarily true. Um, oh, it's okay. It kind of sucks because I'm not logged in, so you can't see the entire options chain. But if you come out here and you look at AMC and you look at the options chain, dang it, it only goes up to ten dollars and fifty cents right here. Um, there's options for fifty bucks on AMC. You, you can see options right now for fifty dollars a share. And they're only probably trading at a penny, but let's just use it as an example. Uh, dude, you could go out right now and you could sell a contract at 50 bucks, a $50 strike price, and you could probably bring in a penny. And, and that's great if you bring in that penny because there's almost no chance at all, or a penny, you're gonna be bringing in times 100 because there's 100 shares. You could bring in a dollar by, by selling that $50 strike price option right now and and generate a dollar income. If you don't think that AMC is gonna go above, are these puts? Oh, still cold. If you don't think that AMC is gonna go above ten dollars and fifty cents right now, you could go ahead and sell this call option for uh, forty-five cents, uh, forty-four cents. You could sell it for forty-four cents. And if you sell it for forty-four cents, you're bringing in what forty-four dollars right off the bat in premium, man. So you can actually use options to generate income as well as leverage your portfolio and leverage your position. And think about it. I, I don't know what the, the options are even lower here. It doesn't go out that far. It's only going out three prices on each side of the strike. Uh, so or on in the money. But nonetheless, man, let's just say that there's a $20 option on AMC that you're making a couple cents on. You could generate income by selling it if you don't believe it's going to hit that price point by the expiration. If you're going to be doing it for January, think about it. You can go bring in $208 right now if you're selling $12 strike prices for January of 2023. Now, I do think that we could see prices above $12 strike or $12 price point on AMC by January, but leverage is not the only thing that options provide. It, it absolutely provides protection on your portfolio. You can buy a put option if you believe the price is going to go down and you don't want to sell your position. And, and that provides you with some insurance. Or you can go ahead and sell call options or put options and generate some income as well. <coughs> Where are we at, though? I know I missed a super. Lacey, thank you very much for the super sticker. You're number one. <laughs> You're number one. <laughs> You're number one. <laughs> You're number one. <laughs> Lacey, thank you very much for the super sticker. You're number one, Lacey. Not me. You. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that super sticker. You guys are absolutely awesome, man. What do you think about Squid Grow? Oh, man, dude. Squid Grow. I have not seen anything about Squid Grow except like one or two people mention it on Twitter. Anything with squid has just a, a bad taste in my mouth now, man. After the Squid Games token did what they did uh, last year, I don't think they, that anything squid is going to be a good deal. Bitcoin is the reserve currency. 0. 0.000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1600. Bitcoin, what are we talking about? Oh, shipped to 1500. It's near. 1500, 1600, 1500. Could be. Bitcoin is the reserve currency. Absolutely. We touched 1485 this morning. It is back down a little bit to 1382. Uh, you know, there's no avoiding that pullback that we have right here. 
But nonetheless, still doing better than it was yesterday when it was down around 1,300 points per coin flat and currently sitting at 1,381 after a decent pullback this morning. So had a nice rally going from about 1,320 up to 1,485. And currently sitting at 1380. So hopefully we get a little bounce and it moves back to the upside there. But nonetheless, the volatility is still growing. How could Shiba was held by 97% and sold or traded by 3% last week? I've been scratching my head on this because it was said that the price had dropped tremendously. Let's see. So Crip Life for real. I think what you're looking at might be the, the Coinbase statistics and the Coinbase statistics showing, you know, 90% of the orders or 97% of the orders coming through are buy orders. And then the other 3% going through are, are sell orders. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the overall buy and sell ratio between all platforms. But nonetheless, you know, when that's just the people on on Coinbase that are going in and putting in their orders, buying and selling, and so on. You would imagine that it's fairly similar across the board, <coughs> but just because people are willing to buy, and this is the same thing that we see with stocks too, just because people are willing to buy, just because the orders are buy orders, doesn't mean that the price is going to be driven up. If Shiba Inu coin is trading at 1382 right now, and I'm not willing to buy it at 1382. I'm willing to buy it at 1379. Okay, the price actually has to come down for me to buy it. It's still a buy order. It still goes through, but the price goes down. And then the next guy, he's not willing to buy it at 1379. He's only willing to buy it at 1378, 1375, 1360, 1320. And, and so on. As long as the buy orders are coming in below the current price, the current price is going to fall until it meets those buy orders. So that is, that's kind of the way that I look at it when, when the buy orders far outweigh the sell orders, but the price still moves down. It's that they're not willing to buy it at the market price. They're not willing to buy it uh, above the market price. All of the orders are coming in or the vast majority of the orders are coming in below the market price. Claybro, on a classic to the moon, one cent really soon. Greetings from Roy, the whole and whole Holland. Nice, Roy, Roy and all of Holland. Greetings to you guys as well. Uh, dude, I absolutely hope the, the Terra Luna Classic goes to a penny. That would be insane, man. Bro, how is you? Sam the man number three. I'm doing great, man. How are you? EMB long term holds. Thoughts did Vin. Oh my gosh. Lucky's thoughts. What are you saying? You're saying ENB is a long term hold and thoughts on dividend investing? So we got no more sick. Ah, Sam, I still feel a little weird, dude. Still got a little cough, still feel a little weird, but uh definitely nowhere near as sick as I was last week. Robin Hood and showing flat line on AMC and Ape. Why would Robin Hood be showing a flat line on AMC and Ape? We're sitting right here at 661 on Ape, and we are sitting at 938 on AMC, 937 on AMC right now. Uh, let's see. It's top of the morning, bro. CK4K, AKA, AKA, It's Crip for life, man. Top of the morning to you as well. Personal opinion, selling in the money puts and rolling weekly is the safest options play in a short squeeze environment. Yeah, it absolutely could be, man, especially if, uh, you know, if the price is going to be rolling higher like that <coughs> or the possibility that it rolls higher. Luke Byrne is live on the Y5 exchange. Nice. M. Yeah, that's what I did not see yesterday. Dark Matter retweeted something about Y5 and I never looked at it, darn it. Now I don't even know what he posted. Dang, Dark Matter retweets a lot of stuff. All right, I can't even find it. Dark Matter, you retweet a lot of stuff, man. 
Uh, six green candles on the weekly. We could see four zeros in a 1600 Miller time. Listen, I would love anything that is above where we're currently at right now. I just want to see some bullishness return to crypto. Dude, people have been dogging on crypto for the last year now, and I'm, I, do, I don't like it. I want to see people, oh yeah, those idiot crypto investors, now they're all millionaires. I wish I would have done it too. Clay, hope you're well, mate. Mike, doing better than yesterday, so that's good. Hey bro, any technical analysis on UFO? Are we talking the coin? No, I, I have not. I have not looked at UFO in a long time. That's that gaming coin, isn't it? Are we talking about this one? Are we talking about this UFO gaming coin right here? <coughs> I mean, man, to me, this just looks like every other cryptocurrency that's out there. Uh, had a very nice run towards October, November of 2021. And has since pulled back probably, I don't know what the numbers exactly are, but most likely about 90 to 95%. Yeah, it's about 90% here. Adding a zero and going down. So about a 90% decline from where we were back in November of 2021. This should look extremely scary, right? Everybody looking at crypto and thinking, oh man, crypto is just... But everything is down like this. Just because this stock, or this crypto, sorry, not stock... Just because this crypto peaked and rallied back in October, November of 2021 doesn't mean that it's a bad coin at this point. Everything looks like this right now. Everything is down 90% from where it was at the end of 2021. And hopefully that's one you were talking about, not a different one. Dark Matter, you must have too much time. Yeah, it tweet, retweets a lot of stuff, man. I couldn't even find that thing on Y5. Uh, let's see what happened to AMC and GameStop. Does it go sideways? No, Tommy, what's going on, man? What's everybody think it's going sideways? AMC sitting right here at $9.41, and Ape is sitting at $6.60 right now. It's not flatlined. That's what you guys are talking about. I mean, you can see it right here on Weeble, sitting at nine forty one and six sixty two. So, I don't know what's going on. A one and only Bronson says, They will be hard, Clay. The crypto industry hurt us. Speaking, did you claim your email from... Uh, I looked at, so I did not get it yesterday, one and only Bronson, I don't know if I got it yet, um, I saw the, the post they had on Twitter, and then I went and looked through my emails, but I have not gotten that yet, did you get yours yet, and if you did, what does that look like, the, because I, I didn't look through it today to see if I had gotten it, but I did look through everything yesterday, and I had not gotten it. I do want to know what it looks like, though. Is it like a, a claim 100% of your cryptocurrency? Like, are they trying to tell you that you've got 10% of your crypto to claim? Like, what what is this email about? Give me a warning, man. Doge is officially weakened. Miller time. It is a possibility, man. Everything is weakened right now. So do you think SHIB could reach 0 0.005? I have a cent in 10 years. Yeah, Bolo Legend, man. Any uh, low grand, not legend, sorry. Bolo, anything can happen in the next 10 years especially giving it that large of a time frame, okay? People 10 years ago, well, they never would have said Bitcoin can reach $1,000 a coin. So, yeah, man, anything's possible in the next 10 years, um, especially with burn initiatives and things like that. We could really get the supply under control, and the price could absolutely be soaring. Yes, I'm E N B K O A T H R L and D I R. Staying with uh, or staying with these companies, uh, but would love thoughts and tips. Shooting for dividend growth. Yeah, Lucky's thoughts, man. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't have like a huge dividend portfolio or anything like that. I just I view dividends as more of a, like icing on the cake or or just a bonus instead of specifically investing in dividends. <coughs> But if you want to Google like dividend aristocrats or or dividend payers, something like that, you can find a great list of, of dividend paying stocks. And let's let's just see what we can come up with. All right, let's see. So this is what we were talking about yesterday with waste management. And let's see if we can get a decent compiled list without having to pay for it. Uh, so a dividend aristocrat is a company in the SP500 that's paid, paid and increased their dividend.
for 25 consecutive years. So that's extremely important. Not only have they paid a dividend for the last 25 years, they have increased their dividend for the last 25 years. We're not talking about any dividend cuts or anything like that. So the theory behind that, right, is that let's say you do get into a company, I believe waste management is on the list, but let's just, we looked at waste management yesterday, um, and let's look at it again today. So if you go back 25 years to 19, uh, let's just go 2000 or 1998, whatever you want to do, uh, monthly chart. So if you go back here, it was actually doing very well. So it would have been nicer if you got in back here, but who cares? Let's just say you got in at the absolute peak and it sucked. So let's say you did get in at $40 per share. You basically four and a half extra money from over the last 25 years. That's nice. But let's say you did, you know, you could have got in better and what is this? 17 X your money. If you got in at this $10 per share and it's sitting at $170 per share right now. So also, if you got in at $10 per share, it's going to make the math a little bit easier. Um, the dividend is $2.60. So not only by getting in at $10 per share and 17xing your money, you are sitting on a 26% annualized dividend because they have not only paid a dividend for the last 25 years, they have increased their dividend for the last 25 years to whereas you're getting 26% every year of the initial amount that you invested per share. That is an absolutely incredible way to look at things. So not only are you sitting on 26% annualized income, you are also 17xing your money at this point. So a thousand bucks turned into uh, $17,000 and you're also sitting on another $260 a month or $260 a year, sorry, um, dividend payments. If you invested $10,000, you are sitting on $2,600 a year in dividend payments and you're sitting on $170,000 in this stock right now. So dividend aristocrats are, are typically companies that do very well and grow over time. You have to keep in mind though, this is a 20 year, this is a 22 year chart just from this low right here to right here where we're at today. This is not a, a short time frame by any means, man. And if you go back to the, the early 90s when it was sitting at a dollar per share, you know, you 170 x your money and, and now you're making $2.60 a share in, in dividend income alone. So think about that. If you would have got in in 1990 for a dollar a share, you're all of a sudden making $2.60 a share every year in dividends, and that number should only grow. That's the power of long-term dividend investing. <coughs> and that's why dividend aristocrats are important. So looking at that, look uh, look up Noble. Let's look up Noble too. What do we got on Noble here? Uh, all right, we got a Dividend Aristocrats ETF. Not bad at all. The current dividend is a dollar eighty six, or a two percent dividend yield on a ninety two dollar ETF. And hey, man, this looks like some amazing growth as well. I mean, if you look at this, the the growth alone tripling over the last well i mean it took a decade to triple that's obvious but nice little dip that we had here with things falling from the november highs that we had and pulling back to 82 dollars. but strong steady long-term growth is what you're looking at with these dividend aristocrats and in solid dividend paying companies you know, you might not get a hundred percent a year in in your dividends and capital gains and so on, but nonetheless, man, nobody could be upset with this chart right here. Nobody could be upset with this dividend aristocrats uh, ETF that you've got. And look, we're looking at a monthly chart, so it is a very long term time frame that you're looking at. Let's go. Let's see if we've got any. Clearly, read my last one, please, and thank you. Absolutely, Chris, I got you, man.
Hey, since Ape came out, everyone said this was the beginning of the end for the squeeze. Still the same spot or anything changing. Besides, if more Ape comes out, we have to rebuy everything. Ready to get out of AMC, but if the squeeze is still realistic, and then it will continue to stay. Look, dude, <clears throat> here's my thoughts on that, Chris. There's a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of people on these other places, a lot of people on YouTube as well that are going to sit there and tell you that it's it's never going to end, right? And, and Adam Aaron is the king leading us to the promised land. And although I do think it is currently still a possibility because we have not yet seen the the dilution, um, I, I am not an advocate of the dilution, man. I'm not someone who is wanting to sit here and wait for AMC to pay off its debt and, and the short interest to go down to zero and, and the short squeeze doesn't take place because that's exactly what's going to happen through the dilution. If Adam Aaron sells directly to the hedge funds that need to cover their short positions, if they own a share of AMC or APE, it doesn't matter which one it's called, if they own a share of APE and they're short a share of APE, they are net neutral in that situation. It is not a short position that needs to be covered. They are already sitting on those shares, able and willing to cover them at any time. So I personally think that the dilution is going to be a bad thing. Um, I, I'm just personally not ready to, I guess, call it an end until we do start to th see things being diluted. I, I mean, I, I guess that's, I'm, I'm trying to wait out till the very last moment or wait out as long as I possibly can. <clears throat> but I'm not like these other guys that, um, you know, I, I truly believe that there's a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of people on Reddit that the short interest could go to literally 0%. There could be no short shares outstanding. Adam Aaron could have $5 billion in the bank for AMC. And, and they would say, there's still short shares outstanding. They're just naked and nobody knows about them. This is the play. Like you, you have to latch on to some real numbers as opposed to just, I want it to happen or I wish it would happen. We still have those numbers, which is why I'm still, uh, I guess, in the game. But dilution's not going to be nice. Dilution's not going to be nice. <clears throat> it's going to be nice for AMC, but it's not going to be nice for for short squeeze numbers. Let's see. Did you want to check FIE ETF on the TSX? Yeah, Sean, I could check that ETF out. You ignore your Chris no good for me. No, Sam to man. I don't know. Ignore anybody, man. The dividend Kings, companies that have paid increases for 50. Ooh, we got aristocrats and Kings. I didn't even know Kings existed, man. Dividend Kings sounds like it would be sick, Frodo. All right, let's see. Dividend aristocrats looks pretty easy to see there. Kings. Dang, man. All right, let's look at this one. Sure, dividend. Ah, come on, man. Do we have something that I don't have to download? I don't want to download their stuff. But, yes, we can look at this. Dividend Kings, man. These guys look sick. <coughs> AWR. Come on. What are you doing? AWR, Dove, NWN are some of these. Let's see. AWR. I don't even know what this is, man. American States Water Company or something monthly chart this monthly chart is incredible right here i mean look at these gains dating back to 1980 man we go back to 1980 and weevil right here 60 cents to 85 dollars what are we thousand xing on our investment if we were sitting in this stock for the last 30 years and they have also increased their dividend as well the current dividend yield, yes, is only 1.85%, but it is currently paying a dividend of $1.59 per share. 
think about that. You know, if you were to go back to 2000, like we were just looking at on waste management, and you got it for nine, ten dollars a share, it's currently you 10x your investment, and you're making what 15% annualized dividend payments based on your original entry price. So AWR is another one that you can look at <coughs> as a dividend king, something that is paid and increased its dividend for the last 20 or for the last 50 years. Um, oh man, I hope I was showing that in there. I don't know if I was showing that or not now. Darn it. I thought I was, but maybe I wasn't. AWR, very nice over the last uh, 30 years. It goes back on Weeble. Dove, let's see what we got here. We got Dover Corporation, same deal, extremely nice long-term graph. It is on a decent pullback from $180 to $130. Current dividend yield is 1.51%, and the current dividend is $2 per share. I mean, imagine getting that back here when it was 20 bucks, and you're still earning 10% annualized dividend because you were willing to hold this. These bad boys seem like long-term investments to me. But nonetheless, it wouldn't be bad at all to 10, 20x your money sitting on a stock like this for 20 years and then collecting another 10% annualized interest on your original payment. Uh, we can look at one more if we got another one on here. NWN is another one. We look at NWN. We gotta find it. NWN, some Northwest Natural Gas Company or whatever they're called here. Not exactly sure, but nonetheless, man, going back to the early 90s, trading at $3, early 2000s, trading at about $20 per share. You didn't make as much in capital gains on this guy. Going from roughly $20 at the beginning of the 2000s to $50, basically 2.5x your investment there. Not a huge capital gain. But nonetheless, you're sitting on a dividend of about $2 per share. So you're still bringing in 10% annualized dividend returns on the, the $20 investment that you made 20 years ago. So you've done very well to grow your money, and you're still making a nice 10% return. Solid, solid, solid companies, it seems like. And we would imagine, okay, we would imagine that 20 years from now, it might be trading at, at 100 or two hundred dollars per share, and the dividend might be all the way up to five or six bucks a, a share. So although it'll be a relatively low to that current price, one to two percent, maybe three or four percent dividend, but nonetheless, if you got in at twenty dollars per share and you're bringing in a five dollar dividend, just because you were willing to hold it, I mean that's that's a solid income at that point. So dividend stocks, yeah, guys, these are definitely some ones to look at. The dividend aristocrats as well. <coughs> Let's see if we've got a, a decent list here of dividend aristocrats. Let's see if we can pull this up and see what we got. Uh, I don't want to download anything, so hopefully they just have a decent list. Uh, yeah, so we've got some, some dividend aristocrats right here. 3M, AOS, ABT. We've got ABBV, AFL. So I guess it depends. Aflac is one of them. It depends on what kind of companies you're interested in. I don't think 3M's going anywhere. I don't really like healthcare companies. So, you know, that's something to think about. Uh, insurance companies. I don't really like insurance companies either, but it's, it's whatever you want. So if you're looking at 3M, let's go over here and see what 3M looks like. 3M, guys, if you would have got in in the early, well, if you would have got in at the lowest point, 2008 during the crash, you would have got in about 30 bucks per share, and man, you would have done very well if going back to 2018, but nonetheless, the, the peak back here in 2021 wasn't bad at about $200 a share. Even if you wrote it up, 4X your investment, 5X your investment, going up to $140, $150 right here, and you're sitting on a dividend yield of 4% and a five, almost $6 per share dividend. So if you would have got in at $30 per share right here, and you're sitting on a 20% annualized dividend plus 5X in your investment, I mean, you really can't beat that. You know what I mean? Like for, for companies that you don't or shouldn't typically have to worry about, 
And that's not to say, you know, that you, you didn't ride it up to $200 per share either and then get out and decide to get into another dividend paying stock. I mean, you can absolutely do that as well. You can take your capital gains. It's not like you have to sit on these companies forever, but a, a solid 20% annualized dividend based on your entry price, plus you're sitting up 10x on your gains. Um, you know, it's those are double positives right there. Yeah, let's see. Out, do bro. What's Luke doing? Probably nothing. Luke not doing too bad today, man. Luke is sitting up 10% right now at 11,000 points per coin. We had a nice rally this morning, sitting here at 11,000 points per coin. And I think a lot of people are anticipating that Terra Luna Classic is going to be making some big moves and they're trying to get in a little earlier so that they can take advantage of those staking and burning moves that are going to be coming up over the next couple of days slash couple of weeks. So Terra Luna Classic actually making some moves this morning up about 10%. Not bad at all. Uh, a little recap though, AMC sitting down 1.60% at $9.40. We've got Shiba Inu Coin sitting at $13.82. It is still up about 6% on the day. GameStop sitting at $31.82, down 2%. Ape is sitting down 7% right now, $6.63. Still up about 5% from where it was earlier at $6.30. NASDAQ is up. Uh, Bior Therapeutics is down, Ethereum, Shiba, and Bitcoin. The cryptocurrencies are up there. Sundial up 4% today, not bad at all. Molinado down 4.5%. CEI is down 1.78%. SPY up a half percent. BBIG break even now, sitting at $1.02. Highcraft Mining down 2%. Netflix but up about 1%. We've got Clovis break even, boxed about 1% higher. Revlon down 5% on the day. Luna Classic just talked about it. QQQ up 0.80%. And we'll watch Ape go into the end of the live stream here. <coughs> Long term goals. Thank you, Clay. And all the bros, so much love. Heck yeah, lucky thoughts. Listen, man, that's. There's nothing sexy, right, about waiting 20 years for gains to come by. But, dude, think about it this way. I don't know how much you guys can set aside per week, per month, whatever. Let's just say it's only uh, let's just say it's only a hundred bucks a month that you can put aside to to start building these portfolios. Dude, even if you're looking at having a decent portfolio in five to ten years from now, and, and that's I would say that's relatively conservative. If you're if you're serious about setting money aside, I would imagine you could either cut back an expense and save more than a hundred bucks a month. Or I would imagine that you can, you know, maybe sacrifice a, a vacation or something this year to, to really pad your portfolio early on. But nonetheless, if you've got a $10,000 portfolio and you're in your 20s or early 30s or whatever, and you have every intention of holding it for the next 20, 30, 40 years until you're ready to retire, if you're sitting on any of those stocks that we just looked at, and you've got and you never put any more money in either. You know, you're sitting on a 20x increase in some of those stocks. You're sitting on a $200,000 portfolio and you're also bringing in anywhere from I don't know, 5 to to $15,000 a year in dividend income alone. So you're still bringing in an extra 1000 bucks a month simply in your dividends and you've got nearly a quarter million dollar portfolio that you're sitting on. Um, simply because you were able to to scrape by and save a little bit earlier on in life. Now, I, I don't think that that's a bad idea at all. Is it sexy? Maybe not. But, dude, you're you're pretty well padded at that point, sitting on an extra thousand bucks a month income and, and a quarter million dollar portfolio. I don't think that's bad at all. <coughs> People asking about dividends, are you using drip monthly or quarterly? These are questions you have to ask when making a trading plan. Dividend reinvestment program is what we're talking about with drip, guys. Clearly, I feel like at this point, Shiba reaching a penny will come quicker than the squeeze. Chris, listen, man, if you truly feel like that, I would say that you know you should at least shave AMC and go into Shiba Inu coin, or you know if you're not going all in at least go apportion it. Now, why do I say that? You've got to go where you have your conviction. You got to go where you believe your money's going to grow, man. Um, Shiba going to a penny, 
you know, it's not going to be easy. I don't want to think that I, I fooled anybody to thinking it's going to be easy for Shiba Inu coin to reach a penny. A penny is still like a, a $6 trillion valuation with the current supply. We're not going to hit a $6 trillion valuation anytime soon. So I do believe we need some massive burns to take place. Um, but nonetheless, man, I, I do think that when crypto does go to rebound, we're going to see some nice gains. Um, uh, there, I, I really, I, I really don't see against that. I, I truly believe that crypto can see some nice gains moving forward. Where's Wana? Wana, are you out there? I don't know where Wana's at, man. I haven't seen her. Jay Garcia, loving the bones, man. Nice bull flag, in my opinion. Nice strong resistance here for Shiba. Small pump back to fourteen hundred. Uh, yeah, dude. It, listen, Shiba's been having a pretty nice last couple of weeks. The volatility, I'm liking it. Um, this gain that we had right here. Very nice gain, indicating that when when people are ready to buy, man, they start to buy. Same deal right here. We clearly didn't go nearly as high on this daily gain. But nonetheless, man, showing signs of life instead of kind of just sitting sideways and not moving at all. The signs of life that these gains are, are showing right now are very solid. It's much better than when we're facing declines every single day. And think about it, if we just go back to where we were in April, you're more than doubling in price from where we are right now. Just go back to where we were in April, and you're sitting at 3,000 points per coin. Uh, you know, that's not too bad, man. More than, more than doubling where you are right now, just to get back to the April price points. I like it. <clears throat> Let's see. Investing is not sexy. Sexy. Collecting a steady income, protecting one's future, and the future of those you love and care. Well, that's sexy. A forty-year-old bottle of scotch is sexy. Yes, Mark. I don't know about a forty-year-old bottle of scotch. I, I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't even know what to do with it, man. But uh, I, I do think that there is a. When I say it's not sexy, right? I mean, you're not going to be sitting there and buy your Lamborghini overnight. But I personally really do like that idea of, you know, just slow, steady, stress-free growth. I mean, you guys have dealt with the stress. You guys, you guys know about what it feels like to watch the market every day. What it feels like to, to worry about the ups and downs. And stress-free, to me, that's sexy, dude. To me, stress-free is sexy. And even if you're sitting there and you're one of those old guys at that point, but you're literally bringing in, let's, you know, just make, pretend that you were able to save more than 100 bucks a month. You know, all of a sudden, that $200,000 portfolio, if you're saving 200 bucks a month, that $200,000 portfolio you have, all of a sudden, that is a, a $500,000 portfolio. Or you actually did better on your investment, and it's an eight hundred thousand dollar portfolio that you're sitting on. And instead of bringing in a thousand dollars a month in dividend income, all of a sudden you're bringing in three thousand dollars a month dividend income. I mean, there's nothing at all wrong if you've got no expenses. If your house is paid off, like you lived your life, you've got all of that, and you're just bringing in $36,000 a year in dividend income, I mean, you are solid at that point. My goodness. Michael, thank you very much for the fist bump, fist bump, fist bump, fist bump. Michael, man, thank you very much for the fist. I love this dude's consistency. My goodness. And Michael says, I've been waiting for these upcoming days, bro. Let's get it, Michael. What are we specifically waiting on, though? Are we waiting on the Luna Classic move with the burns and the staking? Or are we waiting on something else with like Shiba Inu coin or, or AMC? What are we waiting on these upcoming days, man? I need to be, I need a little more specific. Chris says, hypothetically, if we were to, if I were to shave my position, is it better to cut AMC or Ape? <coughs> Interesting, Chris. Um, the the first place that my mind goes is the long term capital gains. I don't know if you are there yet. And, and I have been seeing some people, listen, I, I wouldn't trust them. I would actually try to look it up a little bit further if you can. But some people have been saying that your APE distribution that you received carries over the cost basis from your AMC. 
And so meaning if you would have bought AMC a year ago, then your ape shares are also long-term capital gains at this point. I don't know the tax implications on that, so I am not 100%. Like, don't take that as, as something that I'm saying. I have seen people saying that. So I would look into that a little bit more. But if you were, I don't know if there's necessarily one advantage over the other. Um, I still like AMC better than Ape at this point. But I do, I do think that Ape is nice in the sense that it is a, a cheaper vote to buy right now. But I, I still like AMC better than I like Ape. Uh, hey, I'm not old, just have a lot of experience. There you go, Mark. Heck yeah, that girl's sexy to me and not more math. <laughs> Sam's like, I don't want any more math, man. Come on, no ignore. Sam, never. Uh, do you think that people that are waiting for the 1.2% burn tax start making more trans? So next level, I personally don't think that they're waiting for more. I, I don't think they're waiting for the transaction tax to make more transactions. I actually would expect the amount of transactions to go down slightly once the burn tax is initiated. Um, just because I don't think that people want to burn their own coins and lose out and see a 1% tax on, on every transaction that they make. I would imagine there's a slight reduction and those that are, you know, either don't care about that 1% or, um, or, or, you know, have to buy and sell at that point are going to be the ones that we see making transactions. Luke, bro, heck yeah. Michael, thank you very much for another super chat. And he says, if Luke moons, I'm blowing up chat with fist bumps. Dude, Luke's going to moon, man. Luke's going Luke's gonna to moon, dude. It's Here's my thoughts on that. You know, we've got a lot of catalysts coming up over the next couple of weeks with supposedly staking being reinstated tomorrow and um the burn tax being implemented uh what is it september 12th so there should be a lot on the horizon and i i did a video about it a couple days ago or yes i don't even know when it was it was yesterday a couple days ago but it can go one of two ways man um people can either see it is like it's guaranteed to happen now so we should definitely buy in because it's really it's going to create the future we want for Lunk. Therefore, let's buy in now and just ride it out. Um, other people might be slightly upset that we don't see an immediate skyrocket in price. And then they're, they're no longer willing to hold because, well, this burn tax was implemented and it didn't do anything. Well, yeah, it didn't do anything, man. We, you've only seen $10 million worth of Lunk traded. In, in the last 24 hours, what are we going to do if we burn a billion Lunk? You know, what are we going to do with burning 1 billion Lunk when there's like 7 billion outstanding? So it, it, it could take time. But nonetheless, man, I, I absolutely think it's a step in the right direction. Postmo asks, I'm going to invest in some safer assets. Like, oh, yeah. Dividend aristocrats and those dividend... I didn't even know dividend kings existed, Frodo. <coughs> that, I really don't think that that's bad at all. Um... I just think that with with the current mentality of things and everybody wanting to hit it and hit it now, they view it as not sexy. But dude, there's no doubt in my mind that 30 years from now, you will absolutely be hugging and kissing yourself for investing in a, a non-sexy dividend aristocrat that went up 10x in value and, and is now paying you a 30% annualized dividend based on the price you got in at. Dude, that is, I mean, imagine if you went out and and invested $20,000 in some of these dividend aristocrats in your portfolio, you got 250 grand sitting in your portfolio now, and you're sitting there bringing in five to to $15,000 a year in dividends. I mean, there's there's no denying that that's a solid move. Uh, can Luke reach a penny in one year? Estage. Listen, I, I don't know about one year, a penny, let's see, where are you at on a penny? One, one, one. So yeah, I actually don't think that a penny is going to be impossible in a one year time frame, especially if the burns kick up as well. So I believe that would take you to roughly a, depending on the burns, 40 to $60 billion valuation. And a 40 to $60 billion valuation is exactly where Terra Luna Classic was before. So, do I think the Terra Luna Classic has the same utility as it once did? No. 
Do I think that he can get there in a year? Yeah, man. Uh, I, I don't see why not. And if we have a massive bull rally take place over the next year with with the amount of excitement surrounding Terra Luna Classic and the amount of people that are supporting it right now, I, I mean, we could see much faster growth than, than it ever originally had. Uh, make time to get in, uh, get into mine coin at uncle's house for free power and f free power and free drinks and food. He won't know and will say for video game, but I need to learn mine to thank you. No ignore. Yeah. Yeah. Sam demand. So if you've got a computer or something over at your uncle's house, uh, you know, you can make a couple dollars a day. You can make a couple dollars a day mining some crypto coins over there. Uh, hook your uncle up, you know, if you become a crypto millionaire or something, but one graphics card or whatever running is not going to be that much in electricity. But nonetheless, dude, electricity is a lot more expensive now than it was before. Uh, I was looking at my electric bill the other day, dude, and it's twice as much as it was like five years ago. And I think that's insane that energy prices are two times the cost that they were just five years ago. It's ridiculous to me. Michael with another super chat. Michael says, I was just able to log in a bit ago, but that news from Binance is huge and shows that this will happen for Lunk. Also, I'll take another 40 year Balvany. What is a what is a 40 year Balvany? I don't even know what Balvany is, man. I don't know what that is. What do we got? Uh yeah, maybe the Prosma Samana, have it uh, a short squeeze no Lunk. <coughs> Nudo says next week we're gonna have a short squeeze in Lunk, guys. I don't know if we're gonna have a short squeeze in Lunk next week, but I don't think that there's anybody that's short on Lunk right now. But next week we could see some major, major moves based on uh, staking values. The following, I believe, two weeks is when we're going to see the the burn tax being re-implemented. And, or should be seeing the burn tax re-implemented. And I think that could also be another catalyst. So I would hope that yes, I would hope yes, we do see some major moves in the next couple of weeks, Weeks, like Nuno says. Why didn't I make $4 million today? No, no, Jay Bones, man, you did. You're just checking the wrong account. Clarinho da Brasinha do Ohioinho do Estados Unidos. Greetings from Hobart, Tasmania. Greetings from Ohio, Simon Inyo. Holding 2.37 billion Shiba Inu. It was up 3,000 today in the morning. Reached consolidation. If it hits one cent, profit is 23 million. Old school RuneScape, dude. Twenty-three million dollars would be sick. I absolutely hope that you hit. Uh, I absolutely hope you hit your, your your penny goal there, man. That would be incredible. Michael is Binance joining on the fun. Binance, uh, what did Binance say that they want to do a one point three percent tax and then burn one point two percent? I don't need sexy clay. I need a good, solid, exponential return on an investment that I'm willing to wait twenty years for. It. That's what I'm talking about. Dang it. Frodo's talking all sexy like that to me right now. I don't even know what to do. And I, he's like, I don't need sexy. I just need a good, solid, exponential return. Dang, man. He knows the words to use, though. Exponential return. Ooh, yes. No, nah, Frodo. Stop that, man. Stop that. You're talking naughty right now. Tip. Find an apartment where electric is included. Old school RuneScape. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, man. Especially if you're looking to mine cryptocurrency. <laughs> Dude, if you're mining cryptocurrency and electric is included, they're going to kick you out. I can almost guarantee they'd kick you out. Solar power is the way to go if you're mining. Yeah, Kenneth, that probably would be the best option. If you can cover your mining expenses uh, and you can just throw some solar down there, yeah, you'd be a lot better off. Because the electricity is just, it, it gets so expensive, man. It's ridiculous. Rub that crystal ball of yours. Do you see important days we need to be aware of? And WTF is up with IMPP Imperial Petroleum. I have not seen Imperial Petroleum since yesterday. So let's see where IMPP is today. Yeah, down 4% today. I don't I really don't know what's going on with it recently, man. Down to 30 39 cents right now. Uh, this bad boy was way up here at $9 per share back when Russia started causing a bunch of problems. 
Uh, and since then, it has drastically reduced in price. But hey, man, boom, one day runs up. Like a three-day period, boom, runs up. Just been drastically steadying off ever since. I have no idea why it's so low, but I would. It, could you imagine running from thirty-nine cents to nine dollars per share again? <coughs> that would be insane. Uh, let's see. But yeah, crypt for life, man. I really don't know what we've got coming up in the next couple of weeks. We've got Jerome Powell talking at the Jackson Hole Symposium. Uh, tomorrow, I think it's going to be more of his good news shenanigans. Uh, labor market is strong. Uh, inflation is not bad. You, you know, just basically lying to everybody. Um, so I don't think that we're going to see anything ridiculous transpire tomorrow. But nonetheless, man, we're going to have another inflation rate coming out here in the next couple of weeks. And then interest rates. I don't know when the next interest rate decision is either, but those are going to be two large catalysts that we would want to watch out for when it comes to the overall macroeconomic environment. Where's Juliet? No comment. And Pika, to accident, not last long, and can stay to her. Cassie and Juana, it's all gone too. These darn. Yeah! <coughs> Cassie, Pika, Julia, Gulia. Uh, Natalie, we forgot all about Natalie. Where, where Juana? Where is everybody? Come on now. <coughs> Lunk pump party today. Let's get it. UC Lel. We got a little pump party going on in Lunk. Lunk is up about 10% right now, sitting at 10,900 points per coin. It was just recently touching 11,100 points per coin. So Terra Classic being very volatile. Love the volatility, but nonetheless, a very strong, very fast move in Terra Luna Classic. Guys, you go to you go to bed and then in a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 like a, a 11 minute period it runs from 10,000 points per coin up to 11,000 points per coin, falls off for about 5 and then another 15 minute period runs up to 11,300. So massive gains in about a half hour or so right here. And going from 10,000 points per coin, gaining more than 10%, going to 11,300, solid gains. But since then, it's calmed down a little bit. That's all right. It's allowed to calm down. But we got to look at a four-hour chart. What do we got on the four-hour? Oh, man. All right, never mind. I don't want to get lost on that chart there. Nonetheless, 10,900 points per coin right now on Terra Luna Classic. Not bad. We still got Ape sitting sideways at $6.63 per share. See this from Binance, bro. You see, Lel. See what? See this? You didn't, you didn't say anything. You didn't say anything to see. Oh, no. We'll get the live, the, the love chat in here. I don't even know if we have any blue names in here right now. What is going on, man? All right, whatever. Okay. Yeah, got that guy. I don't even know if we have... Do we have any blue names in here right now? What is going on? Here we get wild in before the burn for their hold wallet. Yes, man. I love chat, my friend. And love chat's my friend. I don't even know if they fly J-Bones. They do, man. We do have a blue name, though. SD's a blue name. Mr. Simon's a blue name. All right, we got some blue names in the chat right now. Don't be afraid to block these... Uh, don't be afraid to block these live love chats or whatever they are. Get them, boys. Heck yeah. Now, that's what I'm talking about here. My bad. I was busy. Simon, Simon, Simon. It is all right, man. You and SD, you guys are just sitting there talking with each other or something. I don't know what you're doing. I can have a blue name, too. <laughs> My God, I'd be, I'd be scared to give Sam a blue name. I don't know. Well, how is it? One o'clock pump time. Let's get it. Adrian O'Brien. Heck yeah. What time is it? <laughs> Everybody knows what time it is. It's one o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Pika, 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 pika. Time. Is it pika time right now? I don't know what time it is. Nap time. One o'clock. One o'clock. We got pika time. SD time. I don't know what you guys are doing, but it is time to go for now. I am feeling a lot better today, so we'll see what's going on with the afternoon live stream. 
don't feel bad at all right now. Uh, thank you for all I do. Look forward to seeing what you have to say every day. This is a race between the blood sucking feds, we the people with decentralized. Yes, man. And I hope that we absolutely come out on top, man. Nah, it's 10 a.m. Adrian, uh, West Coast boys. We got the West Coast boys in the chat. Adrian, one o'clock, man. Yo, caught at the end of the stream, dropping a like and heading out. Boom, dark bro, 521. I love it, man. Bye, everyone. See you later. Frodo says, see you later. SD says, later. All of my friends, heck yeah. London, 6 p.m. in London. My goodness. I'm going to suspend, suspend deposits and withdrawals for Lunk at approximately 2100 UTC on August 26th. That is tomorrow. Should we move about cryptocurrency? It come up and start all the YouTubers on the crypto. That'd be sweet old school. Let's make it happen. Man, I like your your icon there. Very nice. Nineteen hundred hours. You saw a live stream. Uh, yeah, one and only Bronson. We'll see how it we'll see how it plays out today. I do feel better than yesterday, but we'll see what's going on, man. Maybe we just ease back in this week and start up next week. I don't know exactly what we're gonna see, but make sure to check it out later. And if if we end up do going uh, live, but nonetheless, guys, we'll do a couple shout outs and then we will be back either with videos or live stream later. Frodo, SD, Irani, uh, Imrani. See you later. Old school, Adrian. One and only Bronson. We got. Gabby Elsom, see you later. V Fanboy, Crypto for Life, for Crypt for Life. One and only Bronson, Sam Demand number three. Kenneth, DD214, Hemi Life, Callie, Lacey Anderson, see you later. John J, John J, Gabby Elson, see you later. Sweden in the house. Heck yeah, man. I love Sweden. Simonino, see you later, Claudinho. See you later, Simonino. And Ronnie, talk to you guys later, man. Next level, Mr. Simon, old school, J Bones, Kenneth, all of you guys know what time it is. So if you want to say it with me, say it with me. Till the next time, hope that each and every one of you have an awesome day.